name is Ron Jenkins. I'm a professor of theater at Wesleyan University in Connecticut. I've been researching theater traditions all over the world for several decades. And one of my areas of specialty is Balinese theater. And I began going there about 35 years ago, uh, studying the performances and the temple ceremonies, which have inspired artists all over the world for, you know, back from the time of Charlie Chaplin and uh, Antonine Artaud, uh, Julie Taymor, whose productions are on Broadway now, has spent time in Bali. Balinese artists have been an inspiration to people over the world. The longer I was there, the more I discovered that these extraordinary artistic events, these dances, these musical concerts, uh, these theater performances, the mask dramas, the shadow puppet plays, all have a common ancestor, and that common ancestor, a common denominator, is the Lone Tar manuscripts on which these performances are all based. This is an image of the goddess Saraswati, who is the Hindu goddess of knowledge, wisdom, beauty, and the arts. And she's the goddess that's really responsible for all the knowledge that's contained in Lone Tar manuscripts. And every time you see this goddess in Balinese iconography, she's holding a Lone Tar in one of her four arms as a symbol of the power of knowledge. The Lone Tar manuscripts contain texts that are sometimes thousands of years old, but the manuscripts themselves are rarely more than a hundred years old because the material is so fragile. And in this image you can see one of the palm leaf lone tar pages that's deteriorating and this is very common when you find lone tar manuscripts in Bali because the people who own them don't really know how to preserve them. And what has happened over the centuries is that people have retranscribed each manuscript by hand every generation or so, or so. And now there are fewer and fewer people who have the skill to uh, transcribe these manuscripts by hand, who really know the Balinese uh, la language and uh, alphabet well enough. We hooked up with uh, the Ministry of Culture, the Balinese Ministry of Culture, who gave us access to one of the great Lone Tar libraries on the island and helped us to set up, set up a, a studio inside the library where we hooked up a lot of digital cameras, a lot of lighting devices, and some computers so that we could very carefully, page by page, uh, photograph uh, and digitize 3,000 or more Lone Tar manuscripts, each one containing maybe 50 to 150 pages. All over the world there are languages and cultures that are in danger of disappearing and the possible and often as is the case in Bali technology is one of the reasons that traditional cultures are disappearing that the, there's a uh, 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 there's an effect on the young people the young generation that uh, makes them turn towards internet and new technologies rather than uh, uh, staying uh, tuned in to their traditional culture and this is an example where the reverse is happening, where the technology is helping a younger generation get connected to the texts and manuscripts that are essential to their traditions. I think we'll start out the session by giving people uh, a performance, a small performance, of one of the texts. Uh, a young man who's a, a teenager who has won competitions all over the island and, and nationally, will sing from one of the manuscripts. Uh, in the same way that uh, Balinese uh, people have been singing from these manuscripts in temple ceremonies all over the island for centuries. He'll sing from one of the texts that's been preserved by our project. You'll hear from the Balinese scholars who worked with me in putting this project together. So you'll hear the text themselves being sung, and then you'll hear some of the Balinese scholars who uh, co-directed the project with me talk about the process of bringing the government into the project and getting the collaboration of the government and scholars and universities and uh, working together with the Internet Archive in San Francisco to make this a reality. Because this is something that the government has been trying to do because they knew it was important for decades. They've always had these preservation projects and these plans 
to uh, use technology to preserve them, but uh, they they never really achieved it. And it wasn't until the Internet Archive came along and said, okay, we're going to bring you the technology to make it possible and uh, support a team for two years to work on it that it actually happened.